In the early 1980s, a software developer for the Texas oil and gas industry named David Cook saw the potential of the movie video rental business. With profits from selling part of his software company, Cook bought into a video chain called VideoWorks and began running a store in Dallas. Cook had big ideas when it came to his store, but the company would not allow him to make the changes he wanted, including the colors and decorations used in the store. So Cook pivoted and decided to open his own video rental store. On October 19, 1985, the first blockbuster video rental store opened in Dallas. At a time when most video stores were small-scale operations, featuring a limited selection of titles, Blockbuster opened with close to 8,000 tapes displayed on shelves around the store, and it also featured a computerized checkout process. Other competitors only offered a couple hundred movies, so Blockbuster backed up their name with a huge selection of movies. The first store was so successful that Blockbuster began to see rapid expansion. One year later, Cook decided to open three more stores. At the time, rental stores like Blockbuster were the only way people could watch movies that had left theaters without buying the VHS tapes. So everyone saw the potential entertainment factor that Blockbuster had to offer. By 1987, investors were knocking on Cook's door, and he ended up giving up 60% of the business to a group of investors that included Wayne Huizinga, the founder of Waste Management. By then, the chain had 35 stores, including franchises, but was projected to have hundreds by 1988. Huizinga and Cook were soon disagreeing on how to grow the business. Huizinga wanted to borrow money to open company-owned stores, and Cook was worried about taking on more debt and wanted to franchise. The disagreement left Cook selling his shares for around $12 million and leaving Blockbuster altogether. But he didn't hold a grudge. It was just business. Huizinga then assumed control of the company and moved its headquarters to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Under Huizinga's leadership, Blockbuster began an aggressive expansion plan, buying up existing video store chains and opening more and more new stores. By 1988, Blockbuster was America's leading video chain with 400 stores. By the early 1990s, Blockbuster had 1,000 stores and began moving into overseas markets. Huizinga always credited Cook with masterminding the concept of Blockbuster, and in 1995, Cook stated that Blockbuster is where it is because of Wayne, not because of me. By 1994, Blockbuster was making $4 billion a year across 3,600 locations. The slogan, Make it a Blockbuster Night, had transitioned from just an ad campaign to a pop culture reference, and the blue and yellow ticket logo was recognized worldwide. This is when other businesses began to take notice. Later in 1994, media giant Viacom, the company that owned MTV and Nickelodeon, bought the video rental company for $8.4 billion. Five years later, Viacom took Blockbuster public as the number of stores reached 6,000 locations globally. Blockbuster became pretty well known for charging customers a fee for every day they returned a movie late. In fact, Blockbuster was making $800 million in late fees each year. These late fee charges were what may have led to the company's demise. A young man named Reed Hastings was tired of paying late fees, so he sought out to build a different rental company with no late fees. The new company, called Netflix, would mail DVDs straight to your house for a monthly subscription fee. Blockbuster was no doubt the market leader in the video rental space, but the company failed to recognize the shift in how consumers watched movies. In 2000, Blockbuster had the opportunity to buy Netflix for just $50 million. Instead of taking the offer, 
Blockbuster essentially laughed Netflix out of their office. By 2003, Netflix had lured 1 million subscribers away from Blockbuster. In 2004, Blockbuster realized that Netflix was onto something, and they too launched an online platform called Blockbuster Online. But it was already years behind Netflix. This is also when Blockbuster decided to end late fees, which would cost them hundreds of millions of dollars. Blockbuster Online quickly gained over 1 million subscribers, less than a year after launching. And by 2006, they had reached 2 million. But by this time, Netflix had over 6 million users. They were, however, making up ground, and they even added the option to drop off and pick up new movies at their brick-and-mortar stores for free. The only problem was that Blockbuster had racked up $1 billion in debt. This debt, along with competition from Netflix, Amazon, Redbox, Pay-Per-View, and other on-demand options, led the company to lose 75% of their market share. As Netflix grew to 20 million subscribers, Blockbuster Online was shelved after a shift in leadership, and their hopes of surviving also dwindled. In 2010, Blockbuster filed for bankruptcy and was pulled from the New York Stock Exchange. The following year, Dish Network bought the company out of bankruptcy for $230 million. The plan was to integrate Blockbuster's on-demand streaming platform with Dish Networks. But in 2013, Dish began shutting down all the remaining company-owned Blockbuster stores and the DVD by mail service. Today, there is only one Blockbuster remaining. A location in Bend, Oregon has managed to stay relevant because of a loyal following. There was even a documentary released about the store called The Last Blockbuster. And guess where you can watch it right now? That's right, Netflix. At its peak, Blockbuster had 9,000 stores and was making nearly $6 billion a year, which is astounding. The lights of the blue and yellow ticket logo and the slogan, Make it a Blockbuster Night, still resonates with many people, including me. Walking out of a Blockbuster with a stack of VHS movies on a Friday night was an exciting experience. And thinking about it now brings back a lot of great memories. <laughs>